Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If not, it's actually okay. I'm just doing this for fun. Um, but the subject that I'm going to be touching on today isn't really so fun. It's something that we don't really talk about. Um, this is hard for me to talk about because this is something that is very, very personal. And um, men really don't talk about things like this, especially men. Um, what I want to touch on today is something that's not about politics. It's, it's just something that's important. And I feel like we need to, to have a platform to discuss topics like these as well. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is abuse that happens to men. We hear a lot of the times where it happens to women and, and they have a platform, they have the Me Too movement. And I know people are will say, well, you're welcome to the Me Too movement as well, but I'm actually not because I've tried and I've gotten no responses. I've, I've kind of been looked at like, you're a man, so you shouldn't feel like this. You know, a lot of the times in communities, you know, especially in the Latin communities and the African American communities, men are supposed to be men. Men are, are not supposed to feel sad or feel hurt. We're supposed to be strong all of the time. And it gets tiring being strong all the time. So I want people to know that there is a way out. You know, I want men to know that it's okay. You know, it's not okay that it happened, but it's not your fault. You know, I am a victim of sexual abuse. I was molested from the age of four to the age of 12, and then I was raped twice. And after those things happened to me, before I got raped, I told somebody who I felt like should have protected me, and they did not. Um, they didn't believe me. And that happens a lot in our communities. It happens more than we know. It, you know, when I was young, I thought it was just me. But I think the statistics are like over 50% of kids who, who, tell, who tell somebody that they were molested are not believed. And because I was not believed when I was being molested, I got raped after that twice by the same person. You know, and I know looking at me, it's kind of like, well, you don't seem like anything is wrong with you. Like you seem fine, but I'm not. I have a lot of emotional issues. I have a lot of things that I have not been able to deal with yet. You know, there was a point in my life where I was so low, where I was contemplating suicide. You know, being, you know, being molested and being raped and not having the person who's supposed to believe you, who's supposed to protect you, not believe you and not protect you that's hard and it took a toll on me about two years ago and it wasn't just that it was a couple of other things that happened to me you know being the middle child like being the, like if whoever has been a middle child whoever is a middle child knows there is such thing as middle child syndrome like you crave attention because you usually don't get it i was asked by a lot of people that i know even you know you know people in my family why are you so animated why do you speak you know, with your hands, and, and, and why do you have to be noticed all the time? And it's because of that reason. As a child, I wasn't noticed. And I break it down. So I have my oldest brother, who's the firstborn. Then I have my the brother who's before me, who's a junior. He had a place. He's, he's kind of like my father's heir to the throne, basically. You know, not to say it like that. This isn't fucking Game of Thrones. But just saying it like that. Then it was me. Then right after me was my sister, who was the first girl. Then after her was my youngest sister, my baby sister, who was the last child. So I was stuck in the middle somewhere and I didn't have a place. You know, that's how I felt, you know. And I didn't know that at the time. You know, I didn't know that I, I being the middle child, that, that you do certain things because you want attention. Because... For you know, when I was young, I would just do things not understanding why I was doing them. As I got older, I understood, but that's besides the point. This is about abuse towards men, 
and us not having a platform or anything to stand on. You know, again, all of those things that happened to me affected me in a very negative way. You know, I'm able to shut down in a, in a second. And you do one wrong thing to me and I shut down and I cut you off. And and that that's not a good trait. I used to think of it as being a good trait. I used to think of it as, you know, I can protect myself. You know, they hurt me once, they're gonna hurt me again, they're gonna hurt me again. Like, that's how I thought about it when I was younger. But as I got older, I, I realized not letting anybody in, not understanding that we're all human, we all make mistakes. I, when I finally realized that is when I realized I, I need to, to give people a chance. You know, being vulnerable is not a weakness, it's a strength. But when I was young, I didn't understand that. As I said earlier, I contemplated suicide about two years ago. And, you know, there was one person, and I'm going to tell this story because I think it's very important for people to know that there are angels on earth um, in the shape and the form of humans, you know. Um, so I was working at, at a um, luxury candy store and um, about two years ago, and somebody from another store introduced me to to the person who evidently saved my life without them even knowing it. So I met them, but I already planned to, to, to do what I was gonna do. Like I was gonna be alone in the house, nobody was gonna be here. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna slice the artery and might die. Like I already knew that. So that was my plan. So I met this person through somebody else, but then they went to work and then the other person who introduced me to him went to work as well and he worked upstairs so when the when the person who i was introduced to went around he came around from when he was working at to leave the mall so he, so he walked out and as he walked out he winked at me and he pointed at me like hey what's up and it was that moment when i realized or when i thought to myself and i felt it this person's gonna change my life you know he's He's going to be the reason why something great is going to happen, you know, and that day, him meeting him was, was the best day of my life thus far, outside of witnessing the birth of my nephew. It was the best day of my life because no matter what, he saved my life. He really did. And he knows who he is, and that when he watches this, he's going to know. Um, but for men who go through sexual abuse, for men who go through abuse, period, we don't have that, that luxury of saying, I was molested, I was, and I'm not saying it's a luxury, but we don't have that, that support like women have. You know, and I'm not trying to say that you know, women don't experience horrible things, of course they do. You know, that, that goes without saying, but so do men. You know, and it seems to me like because of that Me Too movement, men are scared of being men. You know, it's like we can't say or do certain things because a woman is going to feel a certain way, but yet she wants to feel equal. You know what I'm saying? And I know that's kind of hard to, you know, it's kind of me kind of saying that the Me Too movement isn't right or whatever, but that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, men need a Me Too movement as well because we go through things as well. And we're not welcomed. I, from my experience, I'm not gonna say where I felt like, I was not welcomed in that. You know, um, we need to understand that, that it's okay to be a dude, but it's okay to have feelings at the same time. Like I said, men are scared of being men because we're scared of, of of what a woman is gonna say, for example, like, I, you know, because of this Me Too movement, men, some men don't even know how to speak to a woman because at the ending of the day, it's like, oh my God, he's sexually harassing me, but he's really not. He's just like talking to you, but you feel that way, but because a lot of the times, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that it's not always, that it is always the case, 
But a lot of the times, it's they're going to believe her word over his, except if you're the president of the United States. If you're Donald Trump, then you could allegedly rape and touch anybody, grab anybody by the pussy, and it's okay, according to Donald Trump. But I digress. Um, so I just feel like men aren't... I, I, I don't feel like men are... Uh, when it comes down to, to situations like being abused, our situations aren't taken as seriously as a female situation. You know, I can, like I said, I can speak for myself. You know, I experienced a lot. And men need to be able to talk about these things. We need somebody to have a voice for us. You know, for those who are scared to talk. You know, I read somewhere, and it was a child, a little girl, and I don't know if she got it from somewhere else, but if the story isn't written, you write it. You know, if the path isn't walked, you walk it. You know, and that's what we need to do. You know, it's, it's so tiresome where men, we can't, we, we're just scared to feel. You know, and it, maybe it does come from like our parents. Men aren't supposed to feel hurt, but we do hurt. We do cry, and it's okay. Why is that, why is that not okay for a man to express his feelings? When it comes down to being sad or being angry, why is like why is that not why is that taken like oh my god he's weak? I don't understand. But I just I'm, I'm making this video because I want men to know that that it's okay that you went through these things, you know. And again, you know we aren't taken you know as seriously as a female when these things happen to a female, for example. You know, there was, and I love AOC, I love her, don't get me wrong, I really do, but she made a statement yesterday after visiting the, um, the centers in Texas, I believe it was, and she said, she spoke about the mothers and she spoke about the children, but she didn't speak about the fathers. I want to know why she didn't talk about the fathers. I want to know why she didn't talk about the men that are experiencing the same things that women are. I want to know why she did not sit there and talk about that man who drowned with his 23-month-old daughter. I want to know why she made it sound like women are the only ones who go through these things. I think she needs clarification. I think she needs to understand that her words, especially at this time, they do matter because a lot of people love AOC. When she made that statement and people can get on me all they want, and you know, I know there's gonna be a lot of progressives to say, oh, there was a statement that she made when she said families, and I understand that. When she did make a statement that involved families, and she did. But when she spoke about abuse, and she spoke about things that were happening in that center, in that press conference, she did not mention men at all. And I feel like that is wrong. Men are going through the, male immigrants are going through the exact same thing that female immigrants are going through. And that needs to be spoken about. And AOC had the platform to do it and she did not do it. To me, that is a sign of, of weakness. When you don't, when you, when you don't sit there and tell the whole story, when you sit there and you say what's going to, 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 to trigger people, because you know mentioning women and children are a trigger. You know that. You know that. So that's why you don't mention the man. Because men are in a trigger. And that's a problem. Because why is a female's life more important than a male's life? That's not right. That's not fair. You know what I'm saying? And I understand women are life givers. But who gives the woman the life? We do. Men do. If it wasn't for men, there would be no... There would be no human species. There would not be any. Because men are needed. So they need to stop making this seem as if men are not needed. And they need to stop making this a, this was a political thing. No matter how, I, I love AOC. I agree with her 99.9% .9 of the time. But this is that 0.1%. I do not agree with her. She should have mentioned the man. She should have mentioned men because men are going through the exact same thing. And to me, that wasn't fair as somebody as a as a dude first of all as a man number one and as somebody who experienced sexual abuse and abuse period that was not right that was her time to to promote equality and she did not take it she did not she mentioned woman and child because she knows 
She knows that when you say a woman and when you say a child, that is a weak point for like 90% of America. She knows that and she knew that. And that's why she didn't mention man. That's why she didn't say, oh, men are treated the same way. Because men are treated the same way. And they're probably treated 10 times worse. Because we know that when a man looks weak to his woman, that's that right there is is is, is even lower. Like when a man cannot stand up for his wife and his children, that's heartbreaking. And because of Border Patrol, they cannot. They cannot stand up for their wives because they are scared that they are going to be taken from their families. And no matter what they say, they are. I find it disgusting that that was not mentioned. I find it disgusting and disgraceful that she did not mention that the men are going through the same thing that the women are going through. Don't sit there and tell me that men aren't being sexually abused because I know for a fact that they are. Don't sit there and tell me that they are because they are. The same way the women are being spoken about in a disgusting manner, the same way the men are. Because you don't only have male um, border patrols, you have female border patrols as well. So don't sit there and tell me that. And yes, I'm upset because I've been there, I've been abused, I've been raped. I mean, I am a victim of rape and I am a victim of sexual abuse. And I feel like it's unfair that men are always left behind in that subject when it comes to that. Men are always left behind. It's always about how the woman feels. It's always about how the girl feels. It's never about how the boy feels. It's never about how the man feels when he goes through that. So yes, I have a problem with that. That is appalling to me. It is. And I don't care what progressive, what who, who disagrees with me, I am that victim. I am that victim. And if you're not, you can't speak on it. And even if you are that victim, my experience was still different from yours. Everybody's experience is different. And I just felt as a supporter of AOC and as a man and as somebody who's been through it, I felt disrespected. I really did. <sighs> Sorry for the rant, but I had to, I had to put that out there. Because, and I, I wouldn't be so mad if I didn't actually love AOC. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be so upset if I didn't love her. But I do. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's it's. I know it's a lot to deal with, and I know that that it, you know it, this topic is a very sensitive subject for a lot of people. But when you use it for for a political gain, for a political agenda, to me that's where it stops. Because this isn't about the policy, the political side of it. This is about human rights. This is, and like I said, she knew when she mentioned a woman and a child, she knew that was gonna get notice had she said a man men are experiencing the same things i guarantee you she she probably felt like like nope they weren't gonna listen to me if i said that so let me say children and women sorry it's new york city and it's hot and a bitch need to cool down a little bit um, but again, when it comes to sexual abuse, I think we need a platform. Men need to be able to speak about these things. It, it happens. It happens to us at work too. It happens to us at home too. It happens to us out in the street too. I guarantee you, I know gay dudes who hit on straight dudes all the time, and they make them feel uncomfortable. I, I've seen it for myself. I've seen it. You know. And, and they don't say anything. The straight dudes don't say anything. But it happens. You know, and my hair's a fucking disaster. Jesus Christ. I should have did this shit before this video. But you know what? You see the real me. This is what it is. This is what it's about. Um, but again, I feel like men, we need to be able to speak on it. And I, and I welcome, I welcome the men who have gone through this and who want to talk about this. Who wants this to be a plat who needs this to be their platform to be able to speak you are all welcome every single one of you black white asian spanish whatever you are whoever you are if you're a man and this has happened to you please feel free to, to talk about it and 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 know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel because there is trust me there is i just I gave you guys an experience that I had. I know my experience is different from everybody else's. 
you know, I also came from a family that wasn't so hard on the whole me being gay thing. You know, I you know I'm you know I know a lot of people aren't so lucky when it comes to that. You know, my you know my mom was accepting of it from the age. You know, I told her when I when I was fourteen, but she knew since God knows when. You know, mothers know, and I'm not saying that my father didn't know. You know, most likely my father did know, um, but my mom knew, and you know when I told her it was okay, but when I told my dad it was a different story. It was it was different. And I told my dad, um, but my dad supports me now. He does. Um, it took him a little while, but I think when it comes to a man and his son being gay, I think it's more they think that they're less of a man. And I'm not saying that it's right because it's not. I think my dad knows now that I'm not less of a man because I am gay. You know, I think he knows that now. I'm pretty sure he does. Um, I take care of myself. I pay my own bills. I work. I do what I have to do. Um, so I think he knows. I think the only disappointing thing for my dad is the fact that I don't have any children. I don't, I don't want children. I don't want them. God bless the child that's got his own. I, I, I just don't want children. I think children are, aren't, they're not for me. Um, I will say, this is the one last thing I'm going to say about the sexual abuse thing for men. And I'm not saying this because I, I, I want to draw attention to it. But I'm saying this because it's my truth. It's what I've experienced. So as I previously said, I was molested from the age of four to the age of 12. And when you're on a four, five, even sometimes three, that's when you start knowing what you like, who you are attracted to. You know, I wasn't given that opportunity. And I've been asked, if that hadn't happened to you, do you think you would have been straight? And I don't know. I honestly don't know if I would be would have been straight had that not happened to me. Um, my option was taken away from me. My innocence, you know, I don't know what it's like to be innocent. It's sad, but it's true. You know, I don't know what that, what that feels like because I never had that. I never had innocence. You know, so much that I you know that I went through as a kid watching my mom getting beaten the sh out of you know what I'm saying and I'm not saying that to make anybody feel bad I'm not but this is my truth and I have to speak on it watching my watching my mom walk the streets you know be a lady of the night um my dad doing those things and and um my teacher is asking me do you want to be in foster care do you want us to call the police do you want us to do you want us to do that? I've, I've been through a lot as, as, as a kid and it, it has, it took a toll on me the two, three years ago. It did. And I don't know why I had such a late reaction to it, but it took a toll on me. Um, but you guys, I welcome you, the men, the boys who have been molested and raped and are scared to talk about it it's it's sad you know when your option is taken away from you it's sad and I'm going to use a line from a show I'm not going to say what show it is because if you don't know it then hey you don't know it but I know what it feels like to have somebody on top of you taking your soul taking your innocence I know what that feels like. A lot of men know what that feels like. And I want you guys to use this as a platform to let people know, to share our stories and, and not be scared to share our stories. You men, and I don't care who wants to take this, however they want to take it, you men are all beautiful. All of you men. Gay, straight, Cease, whatever you want to say, however you want to classify yourself, you are all beautiful. Anyway, um, share this video if you'd like, subscribe, and 
I hope to hear your stories and I hope that we can find a way to come together and build a platform for ourselves so our voices can be heard. Juices.